500 people. We got a, a share location from them, from uh, their phone. So we're going inside to pick them up with our rescue boat, our Red Mist. Romeo, 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 this lighthouse, Molibos. Lighthouse, Molibos, this is Romeo, over. Romeo, radio check on 87. Yeah, good copy, radio check, loud and clear, over. I hear you loud and clear also, thank you. We will start with uh, training with uh, Mr. Jenkins. But before all of, all of that, we will make our coffee for everyone. Then uh, we'll wait for uh, boats, because two days had uh, a lot of wind and uh, none boat came. And uh, just uh, we wait today, because the weather is perfect, a lot of boats come here. We are 24-7 ready, always we are ready. What we've been doing is we've been coming in to this bay here yeah, quite happily knowing that there are rocks there and knowing that we have a cage on here and we unlock the engine and just slowly come in. So if this if this bursts, you'll still have something left, yeah, but you still you want to go home then. Uh, you don't want to try and do anything much more unless you know you can actually still save someone, then you make your decision. My name is Robin Jenkins. I'm representing uh, the United World College of the Atlantic. I came here just before Christmas with a rescue boat that was developed and built in Atlantic College by the students there. We've donated it to the Greek lifeguards here, which are called Lifeguard Hellas, who are responsible for looking after this beach here, which is Molovos Lighthouse Beach, and is one of the shortest crossings from Turkey to Lesbos. They come in, in, in overloaded boats, which are inflatable boats, which are sold to them or sold by smugglers over there with a very small outboard motor unit, which gets them across if they're lucky. And what happens here is there's a landing site so that they can come here and there are lifeguards who are able to receive them here. The boat's very fast and it will reach sort of 25 knots so we can get to places very quickly. What we're doing here is ensuring the safe arrival of the, the vessels that come here. Okay. My name is uh, Nikos Mavreas. I'm from Kalamata. I was a professional rugby player and I work like uh, as a personal trainer. Got from the boat when they arrive, it's crashing on the rocks and they got a petrol of the sea all over because they break under. Yeah. Okay. At the uh, 28th of October, I, see, I saw in the, the news uh, that uh, a boat sinked and uh, a lot of people died. I saw the Spanish lifeguards that was there uh, to say that they choose which people stay alive. They, they, have an, they had uh, a lot of hands to rescue all and uh, the people sign uh, in front of uh, their eyes. I felt a feeling that if this happened uh, to my country, uh, I must be there. For that reason, I came here.
I've always wanted to do stuff like this, just have a good amount of training from the Navy and uh, currently in school now uh, as an EMT. And uh, just anything that we can do to help, this is a huge crisis and uh, just to be able to lend a hand is huge. I'm Joshua Morales, I'm 22 years old, uh, I'm a United States Navy rescue swimmer. Hi, I'm Matt Chamberlain and I'm um, a United States Navy rescue swimmer. We're here on Lesbos to uh, assist lifeguard Hellas with their life-saving work here on Limatsiki Beach. We're out here helping whatever we can, just using the skills that we've learned in the Navy and that we've been training for for the past four years to uh, assist the refugees. Seeing this firsthand, opposed to reading it on, a, on an article or hearing about it or talking to somebody back in the States about it, it it's so different because you get a, a firsthand perspective of what these, these guys are going through, these men, women, and children, these, uh, these refugees. It's a long road for these people and it's humbling to know you're, you're just one very small link in a chain that's going for thousands of miles. And, thousands of people and the, the resources needed and it, it's staggering what has been taken away and what now needs to be given back. It's, uh, I think it's one of the greatest crises and uh, calls of action of our time. Johnson. I'm from the Isle of Wight in UK. I came here um, just over two weeks ago now and uh, I'm a retired doctor. Just came to see what I could do and um, found this place. It's Caracas Lighthouse on the island of Lesbos and it's uh, one of the most dangerous landing points I think on the island. There are lots of volunteers at various other places but not many people down here and when you drove down here you probably see why it's really hard to get here. We just do night watch and uh, come down here during the day and try and make the place habitable. It's uh, it's the equivalent of a listed building here, so we can't do much to it, but we've made it fairly weatherproof and inside at least you can sleep, sort of. This is the penthouse suite, and uh, there's usually at any time during the day and night, at night, there's only two of us on the day at the moment, but at night there's usually six or seven people. Two or three of them will be on the top of the hill, and they, they look out with a thermal imaging camera. Down here, people just hang out and uh, 
pass away the hours and some of them will sleep in one of the tents around the outside. This place we're just rejigging at the moment but uh, we use lots of recycled things. We're just making some shelves at the moment uh, using the covers. We've got hundreds and hundreds of these covers from, look at that, Yamabishi. That's, uh, yeah, top grade uh, stuff, isn't it? So, and these are the transoms from uh, the, the boat. So we've built some shelves. Over here is sort of like a medical area. It's just in a mess right now, but we can rescue people up the cliffs and give medical help. We've got uh, um, rescue blankets here and some dry clothes and basic stuff. And here we made this floor, it's just um, earth floor, so we, we got some pallets and we stuffed uh, the lining from these fake life jackets. We cut a load of life jackets open, stuffed them under to make uh, some insulation. So I've just cooked up a beautiful meal, which I wouldn't have normally given to my dog, but it tasted quite nice. We sort of make some bedding up in here and we keep a few blankets and things. It's a mess again, but every day it gets rejigged. The night staff come in and uh, they may have a landing. Everything goes to pot, so the next day we put it all back together and try and make it better. That's our little mansion. Refugees coming over are often attracted by the light here and uh, if they hit the rocks they're in big trouble. Because they're overladen inflatable boats, they just explode on the rocks and uh, then they're in the sea and it's, they're out of depth, only about 20 metres out there. About four nights ago we had three boats land in the middle of the night um, and the first one was that little little plastic boat down there, 14 foot boat with a little mic uh, outboard on, 16 people on board and the first I heard I was um, sleeping in a tent around the corner, not sleeping, just laying awake and uh, I heard the buzz of the outboard motor. We have some guys with the thermal imaging up on the top there, but they hadn't really spotted it. And uh, just heard the buzz of this motor, and then all of a sudden, all this screaming, and lots of women and children obviously in peril for the life, and I think they'd hit the rocks here. Um, so there were about six of us on that night. We all dashed down there, and we, uh, we waded in, got the boat safely to shore, and got everybody off. Women, children, children with... Uh, there's a, a lad with cerebral palsy. We had to carry him up the cliff. There were people in their 70s and 80s. And um, it was a, a difficult night. Really shocking. Shocking for me. I've never really heard people screaming for their life before. It's a horrible feeling. And then uh, any time of day or night, we put out a call and uh, we get local people come down with the pickup trucks. Strictly illegal, because you can be in prison for people trafficking, you know, all the stupid laws but um, we got people down here and uh, shipped up. We have a little transit point about five kilometers away and a converted cheese factory and we get them in there get them some warm drink and things and uh, they stay there for about half an hour an hour until the bus comes from the MSF camp. At the moment we're actually moving into a kind of a, a stage of training in the boat which is actually kind of quite technical. So we've worked on things like uh, reversing the boat backwards into tight spaces with an anchor which is called veering back, which normally you wouldn't do in your first days of training on the lab boat, you'd actually have some experience before doing that. But because the crew here are uh, kind of picking things up very quickly, then we're stuffing as, uh, as much training in as possible. Um, the other thing that we've been doing is quite a lot of man overboard. Uh, there will be circumstances that these guys have to, to deal with in this boat, which will be that there are people in the water. Man overboard! We've got no power! We're without power! <coughs> 
which is a very critical thing because you're in a boat that has momentum, speed, power and weight and, um, uh, and you can get that very wrong. So uh, there's a very um, tight uh, protocol in how you do that and everybody has actually been kind of picking that up. lifeguard in Jacksonville Beach, Florida, as well as a volunteer lifeguard for the American Red Cross Volunteer Life Saving Corps. People have been asking me, you know, why why am I here? Why am I doing this in a different country? And, you know, I, I save lives back home already, you know, do it in another country where help is needed the most right now. You know, it doesn't feel like this is real life right now because it's just the most rewarding feeling I think I've ever felt in my life and the most eye-opening experience so far that I've gone through in my life. You know, we all complain and have problems back home. At the end of the day, we have our friends, and we have our family, and we have our home. These people just hopped on a boat. Who knows if they're gonna make it alive? Some are leaving their families behind because they can't afford to all come over. So it's just, it really makes you think, and like handing over those babies to each volunteer, like that first rescue, it's just, my whole world kind of stopped for a minute, you know, and I just put so many things into perspective. Never met these people in my life. We're from different parts of the world, the USA, Australia, Turkey, Greece, everywhere. And the moment I met them, you know, it's just like family. We all came together as one and we're still working as one. So every day you go up the hill, you check for boats for 12 hours, then you go home. That's our job. This, how it's going? Have you checked already? No. No? Okay. Yeah. Can you spot the fires with the thermal vision? Like, you should be able to. Really warm part. To the other spot, like, you, we can see more Turkish coast, and also we can check the boats that are going to Agio Theodora, that is the next beach. So, my name is Samuel Nakar. I have been here for four months. I arrived the 15th of September and the first place I came was over here. I came as a photographer. This one was one, and then you have to move to the third one that is up there, but you can check over here. No, the, then you put it down there. Yeah. I have been here, like we started, we were the people in the ground from the lighthouse. We have a camp right now, and we have a clinic, and everything has improved a lot, but the beginning was just mental, like 3,000 people arriving every day and controlling by four volunteers that doesn't have any kind of experience or have, doesn't have any kind of professional training in this kind of situation, so it was just like crazy and chaotic. Yeah. And so Lighthouse has been here three months already, four months, and now we are growing, growing, but it has been difficult. <laughs> it has been really chaotic and really difficult. And now we are really happy. Like we are tra treating people like people, <laughs> not like just refugees or whatever. They are people like us. Right now, I'm just stopping thinking about the future. I cannot think about the future. I'm just living right now. And it's going to be fucking hard to go back to society. That's an issue that we have been speaking a lot about volunteers. Like, the next crisis is being basically all these mentally, mentally ill volunteers that are coming home. Like, no one is treating psychologically. No one knows how to react to these situations. They are going to be fucked up. And I have seen them. 
have seen them going home and they are just fucked up. They cannot be in society again. And it's going to be really difficult for all these volunteers coming back. And as I am one of those, I don't know how I'm going to get back to, to society. Like, I went back and I was two weeks drunk. <laughs> and that's all I could do. I couldn't just, like, I, could, I couldn't speak with anyone. It's, I cannot tell what I have been doing over here, what I have been seeing over here. I just felt in love with this island because it's history and repeating itself. Like in 1920, the same situation was happening and Greek people was reacting in a such different way. They were giving houses, they were giving food, they were giving jobs to these refugees. And now in 21st century, we are not able to do that. And that's just awful. And we should feel ashamed about our society. Anyway, let's go back to you. Take, you, you want to? Yeah. My name's Josh Turner Hunt. I'm from England, Devon. I've been here for three days. I feel pretty. I mean, I knew it was something I wasn't really going to expect. You know, I was unsure about what to expect, kind of thing, and. I still, I'm still feeling that kind of way. You know, each day is different. Um, you know, it, yeah, it's quite shocking. And at the same time, I feel quite humbled. You know, and, and helping people out, and it's, it's, it is a feel-good feeling. Well, we're expecting if there comes a boat, we're expecting them to be cold. The best way to, if they're, if they're still walking, they're, they're good enough to. Uh, we just take them walking straight up because we don't we have only have this little room, and uh, the walk will keep them warm. So, but if we have people who are unconscious, we have to take care of them in uh, this uh, stretcher. And um, this is our little hospital. Yeah, <laughs> this is a hospital. <laughs> we have some oxygen and we have the equipment laying here, and we just have to. Uh, to get them the wet clothes off and get them warm again. We have uh, those uh, heating blankets we can put on them. My name is uh, Marta Bolten. I'm from Norway, Bergen, Norway. I'm a firefighter at home and uh, I travel down here with the medics Bergen. I thought I would uh, experience a lot of sadness, but I haven't, I only have seen tears of joy when the refugees come over. And uh, the thing that amazed me the most is all the people here helping and uh, yeah, people from all over the world. And There's more than one hour before we get any help, so uh, we have to try to get them farther up the road and we have a stretcher we can carry them up. So we will need help from the other guys to just to carry. And a few blankets in there. We don't have any time to change their clothes. If they're wet, they just have to start walking to keep them warm, to get them up to help. Yeah. So we're pretty much alone here. The um, scary spot of uh, Lesbos. Um, this is uh, where we are right now. It's uh, a bad place for a boat to land. It's uh, a lot of dangerous rocks out in the ocean. So if people come in here, they may end up in the water. I know it's cold, people tell me that. And uh, as a paramedic and firefighter, we we will take care of that, try to take care of it, yes. We're from different places. Never met before. We yeah. had the same teacher though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Two years apart, same teacher. We are gonna take a picture and say to her, look what you've done. <laughs> <laughs> met in Lesbos. Yes. <laughs> I think she's gonna be proud. Hopefully. So, this situation, Isidore and I had a conversation on the beach and because we weren't certain about what was going on over there, 
we felt more happy going to inspect it. But we weren't sure enough to call Romeo, right? We have to change that, right? Romeo is sitting in a room with a radio on with duty, binoculars. with binoculars on duty, right? There's no shame in calling uh, uh, um, a senior agent in this. It's their job, okay? So they're there to be contacted about this. Worst case scenario, we get out there, there's a boat full of refugees and some of them are possibly at the point of death or even in the throes of death. You don't try and second guess. If the, we were right to launch then, right? We thought there was a boat in distress. It turned out that it was a lighthouse on the other side, but we were uncertain. So of course it's better to be safe than sorry. It's but better to be safe than sorry. Yeah. So <clears throat> in this situation, we make a call and we decide, okay, we're going to go for it. But at that point, there needs to be really tight coordination with everybody, all the radio procedures which we'll get with Romeo. But it also means that there's a boat in the water. People on shore need to be mindful and keeping a watch. Now, I don't want to rain on anyone's parade and I don't want to sound like a bastard or anything like that. But when we came back, everyone was sitting around the fire playing guitar. Okay, so at that point, you know, we could be in shit. Yeah, and, and we could have hit a rock and all sorts of things. And I know that someone like Panos is listening to the radio all the time, but in the middle of a call, you're in the middle of a call. Keep an eye. Yeah. Yes, of course. We'll go through more of this tomorrow about a launch procedure, really, really tight, and we get it really clear so that we can kind of pass it on. here so I'm trying to fix this heater uh, because our doctor are providing here medical care for the refugees so when they arrive here they are wet and we need a heater there uh, here that's why. Like this, third barrels now. They blew two our like houses with all the donations inside. So we try to stay on balance and with the houses. We were safe, so it's hard. It's cold and windy and it's night.
immediately go to the other boat because here is the camp. They can get help here. We go immediately to the other boat. I had a shipwreck that I went in to do search and rescue uh, with the sea with the watch team and I mean this day we had like 88 uh, saved people to death and it hadn't touched me so much because we don't have as rescuers we don't have to think about uh, the people that we are saving we just have to think about the numbers because otherwise we are going to get crazy. My name is Panos and I'm coming from Athens, Greece. I think that the thing that's going on, it's like you dropped a bomb in Athens and just the Greeks are, are trying to get in other cities. That's all, I mean, yes, there are Syrians, but it can happen to any one of us. It's not uh, that difficult to have war. I mean, during the winter time, the sea is going to be rougher for sure. And actually, right now, maybe you can't see waves right on the shore, but inside the sea deeper, it's it's rough right now. And, and we have no wind right now, but it's still rough. So uh, all the NGOs that are here, they're saying that on the march that we're going to have a lot of boats and this kind of things. I'm Isidro Splitas. I'm my origins are from a small island called Dikaria here in Greece and I mostly live in Athens. This year it was the first winter that I wasn't working uh, during the winter and the autumn so I had a lot of spare time so I decided to come, come here to Lesbos to, to help with the refugee situa situation. With the rescues it's, the feelings are always mixed up from one side you you want to act you you want to feel useful but from the other side this means that people are actually in danger uh, i'm always happy when i can i can give to people when i can save someone but actually i pray for for us not to be necessary to be here and doing this uh, i really i'm here with my lifeguard rescue team, lifeguard Elas. We are here about, the whole team is here about like two months in very rough conditions. We are really like a family. I, nothing describes it better than saying that we are a family. Well, what I have to do is to leave for 10 days and then for sure I'm returning here to stay for the whole winter. I will stay here and if it is possible to to put somebody to work instead of me in my business, I will stay here during the summer. That's what I'm trying to do. Got a, a solar case on from them. 
from uh, their phone. So we're we'll going inside to pick them up with our rescue boat, our red mist. Yeah. Life vest? So it really just dissolves in there. It won't like mess you all up or anything. So you can go because you have one. Yeah. And uh, who else? So Panis, if you're Beachmaster and I will communicate with you on the radio, uh, we we'll need to launch two boats into the water, we'll put Red Mist into the water first, we'll put Shark in afterwards, Red Mist goes off and meets the casualty vessel first, and then Shark joins us and liaises with us on the water, and then we can make a strategy for how we land the casualty vessel after that. I have people back home asking me, why are you going there to help terrorists or ISIS? And I just don't even know what to say, but like, just walk away because it's just the most ignorant thing that I've heard. Um, 
people really don't know or understand what is going on. They just hear the word refugee and automatically think that these are just terrible people that are gonna like come kill me. Like it's the opposite, it's not true. Today we helped a triathlete, a famous triathlete from Syria and helping moms and infants and you know families and the moment I see their face and I see their smiles you know like they're all so appreciative of, of us and what we do and they really are thankful like regardless of our language barriers you, you can just tell by looking in their eyes you know they're so happy to see us and and they're all like shaking our hands and you know saying thank you and it's just it was a great feeling they're all extremely good people. In the States it's kind of we just see them as Syrian refugees. No, they're not Syrian refugees, they're people, just like all of us. And to be able to help and just get these guys here safely is just, it's so big, it's so much bigger than ourselves. We're all human beings. And we all belong to the same tribe, but, sorry. <laughs> these people that are coming over here, I don't know if there are any terrorists among them, but Certainly the women, children, old people and the disabled people I've seen, they're certainly not terrorists. And they shouldn't have to do this to get away from bombing and violence. We should look after each other. They're here, they're volunteering. Who knows how they're making any money right now or supporting themselves or their families. We're pretty much on a vacation. Like, we're here for a week and then going back to our lives. You know, these guys are, they're sticking it out and they're not gonna quit or stop until it's all over. It's amazing. <laughs>